Yeah. Okay. So 416 Coffee, we started that, um, we reopened that business in 2014. So me and Carm started the business together. Carm was in the coffee industry in the 90s. He had started roasting coffee because he was kind of upset with uh, the Italian coffee culture. He wasn't happy with what was being drank up there. He saw room for improvement. He slowly kind of learned uh, the delicate art of roasting. And then he was able to purchase some equipment when another roaster had went out of business. So that kind of took Carm on a journey where then he was running the business in St. Catharines from the year 2000. And then in 2008, he was dealing a lot with the states. Obviously, there was the financial collapse. He shut down, put all of his equipment into storage. So flash forward, I'm in university. I'm in my second year. I'm doing my undergrad at Brock. I'm concentrating in marketing. And I see this opportunity for third wave coffee or specialty coffee in the Niagara region. So I go to Carmen, I'm like, hey, like we should reopen the coffee roasting company because I don't think there's anyone doing specialty coffee in the Niagara region. And if they are doing it, I don't think they're doing it well. And so at that point we start, we start in like just this little unit. We have like no money. We're handwriting each kind of roast on the bag. No one's taking us seriously. Our packaging super unprofessional. We're just kind of gritting it out. We're in like the middle of just gritting it out. And so we're, we're door knocking, we're trying to sell to commercial clients and we're doing a little bit of online. Um, this then we kind of gritted out for years. We're beating the pavement. We slowly develop some commercial clients. We slowly get better packaging. And then finally we take the leap and we open up our Port Luzi store. So we open up the Port Luzi store. That was about three years ago now. That store does really well. We use that as a springboard to double our production facility size, add like classes and things like that. And we, um, then we open up Grimsby. So now we're, we have three locations. We do um, a big online business and that all happened after, after port. So in the past three years, we've seen like exponential growth. So yeah, to me, 416 Coffee is just a matter of um, creating something that's super enjoyable and being a coffee place, a third wave coffee place that doesn't take itself too seriously. You know, our taglines fuel for fun. And that's because we're, we're just having, we're having a good time. We're trying to put something in your cup that you're going to enjoy. Um, and we, we stand up for the things that we believe in, not, you know, we don't necessarily stand up for the industry, kind of the industry morals, industry beliefs. We do our own thing. We're our own thing. I always say that we're not part of third wave coffee. We are the fucking wave. So that's that. Um, Mike, please don't run this I can't do latte here with this milk. Nick, I'm just getting you doing things. Like, I'm nervous. Nick, this is not the latte here. I know, it's not good, Aaron, it's not good. I'm turning away. I think what makes us better than other coffee roasters is just that we, we're more consumer-centric than anybody else. I don't know anyone else in the industry that um, pays attention, listens to their customers as much as we do. We've done things uh, with uh, charitable organizations where our customers directly picked where that money was going. We've done collaboration roasts, we've done um, product launches, all based on customer feedback. We're very, very, very customer centric. Um, we don't know better than our customers. Our customers tell us what to do and it makes our life a lot easier because we don't have to make a lot of hard decisions. We just listen to our customers and we just move, move in that direction. A what? Corn Well, you're gonna be on it. I was on it. No, you're gonna die. Come on, man. Yeah. You're on Corn Hustle. So marketing and branding has been imperative to our growth as well. Um, my background's in marketing, so it's something that I'm very passionate about. And honestly, in the coffee industry, as much as you know, there's differentiation with products, it does come down to building a brand. It's building something that you know people want to want to buy because of what you stand for. And so that's where uh, fuel for fun. Some of these ideas came from was this idea that we're not like kind of like the coffee snobs of some of the other. Um, third wave coffee roasters, our idea was just, we're gonna make something that's delicious, that's very approachable, that's easy, that's accessible for everyone. Um, and that, that goes into our pricing strategy, that goes into our content's very fun, we don't take ourselves too seriously. And this, this ideology, this brand, this person we've created around 416 Coffee really represents how we all are internally. It's very true to us. So there's nothing disingenuous about us. When you meet all of us, we act out very much so how the brand communicates. And I think that comes through in a lot of our marketing channels. And it's a, a reason why people have been able to resonate with us. Because it's like you're, you're speaking to another human being. It's not like, you know, this 
prim and proper corporate kind of a very polished facade. 416 Coffee is very much me, Carm, my family, the people that work here. It, it feels like you're interacting with a person, not like you're interacting with a very polished um, brand. And that means sometimes we, we miss that, maybe we, we uh, stray outside of the lines, maybe we swear too much, whatever. But it does feel very genuine, and I think that's what resonates with people, and that's how we differentiate ourselves um, through all of our communications uh, with, with, our, with the public and with our customers. Freewheeling it. Let me go, baby. Yep. Uh, what's it like working at the one six and for me to just just how you just work? Just sum it up. It's uh, slave labor, dude. I haven't had a Saturday off in three years, <laughs> but it's absolutely incredible, man. What does it mean to you? You know, Mike, it means so much to be able to help my father and my brother grow this business. You know, we're going we're gonna to take over the Niagara region, then we're taking over Ontario. Being part of the small business landscape in the Niagara region has been crucial to our success and our growth. It's been important because we've been able to collaborate with so many so many great businesses. We've had, you know, beer releases with Counterpart. We've had drink releases with Pharmacy. Um, we've done countless giveaways with other small businesses. So being part of that landscape has been crucial to our growth. And it's really, it's really helped us get our name out there while also supporting other small businesses. Uh, personally, I know me and Karm both feel that entrepreneurship and small business is very important to the fabric of, of Canada, to the fabric of our society. And we, we do believe in voting with our dollars. So supporting businesses that you wanna see in your community in 10, 15 years. And there's, there's nothing wrong with big corporate chains. They employ, employ a lot of people. Um, but more money stays in, com in the community when you support a small business, something like 20% more. So we kind of vote with our dollars. We hope people vote for us with, our do with their dollars. And we just have an added focus on quality and the community that we serve. And that's, that's been foundational, even with how we treat our employees, um, with how we just support the community, how we exist in the community. Um, yeah, and that's been, that's a massive part of kind of our company culture, our, our ideology and how we've, we've grown in this community.